Right, Wakefield um, would like to open the meeting at 7 p.m. on June 18th, 2020. All members are present. All right. Um, Melrose want to open the meeting at uh, 8.03. 7.03. 7.03, sorry. Um, everybody here is present. And the next first thing on the agenda is the minutes well done from June 3rd. Um, anyone from anyone have any comments on the minutes? They look good. They look fine to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I thought they looked fine. Good. Very good. Okay. Who wants to make a motion from what town? I'll, we don't have to go in a particular order. Whichever one. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of the meeting from June 3rd. Am I correct? What that did? No. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 3rd. That's Elaine Silva. So we'll do it by town. So um, Elaine made the motion. Can't this one I'll, I'll, I'll second that motion made by Elaine. Okay, perfect. Um, all in favor, Gorville, yes. Silva, yes. Linehan, yes. Okay. Now we're gonna um, anyone want to make a motion for Melrose to accept the minutes of June the 3rd? Yeah, I'll make a motion to accept the June 3rd minutes as I'll second written. it. All in favor, Garapay, yes. Lissa, oh, yes. yes. <laughs> Okay, three zero zero. Um, <coughs> but in right now, as you can see on the agenda, there's a lot of Wakefield items, uh -huh. Wakefield action items. So um, I'm going to suggest that we go to the health director's report so that the um, Melrose meeting can adjourn and Wakefield can continue. And if the Melrose people want to. Um, listen in, that's fine, but it doesn't need to be part of your meeting and, and part of your meeting minutes. Are people okay with that? Yep. Yes. Yes. Fine. Okay. Okay. So yep. um, today's numbers for COVID uh, numbers, Melrose is holding steady at 241 and Wakefield is 311. It goes up maybe one a day or so, or one every other day or whatever. So um, very flat right now, which is fantastic. Uh, let's see, the public testing is scheduled for tomorrow. And I think there's 110 people who have um, pre-registered. So we'll be fine. Uh, the Triple E, we've had actually this week, including this morning, or today, yeah, this morning, um, some conference calls that include one specifically on Triple E, and this morning partly about Triple E. So the uh, testing for mosquitoes for West Nile virus and Triple E have started this week. They are, it will be, it will look pretty much like last year's program except they're adding uh, some more trapping and they're going to be doing some more communication um, to the public and also communication directly to the recreation camp schools and sports organizations so that it's not left specifically only to us doing that. Uh, let's see. Um, so, is, is there anybody on this call to talk about massage from Melrose? No? Um, okay, I wasn't sure if they were, I put it in my health director's report, I wasn't sure whether they were planning on coming to the meeting tonight. Um, So I, I sent you the, oh, you know what, Carol Ann, I didn't resend it to you. Okay, what um, they had, what were they requesting? Or just They were requesting that the board delay the opening for massage 
That's the, everybody else wants everything. Yeah. They actually wanted it, want it to be delayed. So um, they, you know, they on their own can delay. They don't, if, uh, even though the governor's phases start, uh, phase two, step two, they don't have to open then. If they personally don't feel like it's appropriate for them or they personally don't feel safe with that risk, they can wait. They can, uh, Elaine, you're making a lot of noise. Uh, they, don't, they don't have to do it. We don't, you know. So we don't have to order them to delay. They can delay on their own. I don't know if you guys have any Melrose board members have any feelings on that. That sounds fine to me. It makes sense to me that they would determine on their own, you know, after the order has been made. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. okay. So I will, I will respond and, and say that you all felt that it wasn't necessary to legislate and that people were welcome to delay on their own. I, I think we should stay with what the governor is doing. Right. Instead of, you know, changing a few little things here and there for individual businesses. I think we should just stay with his plan. Okay, I can respond to that. Uh, let's see. Wakefield Town Hall is open to the public. 8.30 to 12.30 by appointment. Melrose is not open. Somebody's making a lot of noise. Laurel, you wanna mute people? Um, Melrose City Hall is not open to the... Don't mute me, because I'm in the middle of talking. Uh, All right, can you hear me? Okay, so uh, where was I? Melrose City Hall. So Melrose City Hall has a date of July 6 for workers to come back, but uh, it's still only gonna be one person per office space, so it's not going to be dramatically different than what it is now for offices that have people here. There are a few offices that have been working 100% remote. Um, everybody will still be encouraged to work remotely if they can. We will be under the 25% rule. So, um, and then after July 6, there'll be, you know, the public will be coming back in at some point after that, but a date hasn't been determined. And I think that's all I have. Unless anybody has any questions, comments? You're going to have to unmute people, Laurel. I did unmute the whole group, but now Carol Ann is muted. Candace Mort, no, they're all muted. Oh. They muted themselves. Okay. I unmuted everybody. So it's up to them to. <coughs> Elaine and Maureen, you need to unmute yourself. Okay. You're fine. Um, Elaine is, is still muted. Muted. There you go. Okay. Is there a particular reason why Melrose is not opening City Hall, or they just haven't quite? gotten as far in their planning. Okay. They also haven't got, not gotten, they also haven't installed <laughs> all the plexiglass that needs to go in. Okay. Wakefield started the process earlier, so, so they're ready earlier. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, um, before Melrose people leave, 
uh, I want to just set the next board meeting. At this point, I, I think the COVID-19 part is relatively stable, knock on wood. I don't want to jinx myself. And um, I don't know if you want to go back to the regular monthly meetings or what you'd like to do. For the monthly meetings uh, prior to COVID, the individual <laughs> boards or was it yeah. joint? <laughs> yeah, Carol Ann, you started. We say goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, normally the board meets once a month, separately. <laughs> oh, separately. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. We need good with going back to that. We can still meet at Turner's. Right. <laughs> I will miss you guys so much. <laughs> <laughs> we can still meet, have joint meetings when there's, you know, big issues. That's a problem. You know, apply to everybody. Hmm. <gasps> okay. <laughs> um, so that would be for Wakefield the, the second or third Wednesday. Of July. That's a third. It would be the 15th is the third Wednesday. July 15th. Okay. My dad's birthday. And mm. Melrose, you changed so much. What are we back? Now we're doing Tuesdays, right? Yeah, we're on Tuesdays at 7, I think. Okay. Is, Frank, is that the best for you? Yeah. Yes. Okay. July 7th. The, um, the Tuesday, like every other Tuesday, I have patients until 7.30 on the Tuesday. Huh. Um, I can try to change that unless we can pick a different Tuesday. Well, we can also, I think Monday has worked for people too. Is Monday, Frank, okay for you? I know Thursdays don't work for you. Yeah, I mean, Thursday I work later, um, but actually not for the summer. Uh, Mondays are as good or bad as any other day, I guess. Um, Carol Ann, what about, what Tuesdays would be better for you? So, um, in July, the, the 14th and the 28th are good for me. So, do you normally work, like, the second and fourth Tuesday or the first and third Tuesday? It's every other Tuesday, actually, um, depending on that. But I can, I can shift that as long as I know in advance, but that... For now, the seventh is a is a day that I'm already booked uh, with with patients that evening. So, um, what we try I, to do is have the same schedule every month. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Day, when we're actually allowed to meet in person, I can book the conference rooms, and they don't get yeah. Booked. Everybody puts it on their calendar, so they don't book other things. Well, actually, I'm glad you're mentioning this because now that we're not going to meet on Wednesdays, I think that's what we were doing when I first joined. I can switch that Tuesday evening to Wednesday. So not in July, but for the rest of the, you know, going yeah. forward, I can do the Tuesday. Okay. Well, normally we don't meet in the summer. We will. Oh, obviously. okay. <laughs> we will meet this summer because of COVID-19. Yeah. yeah. All right. So it sounds like July 14th works for Melrose. Mm hmm Thank right. you. Yep. Okay. We'll come up with a step date um, for the future. Okay. That's cool. thanks. And um, and then from then on it will be every second Tuesday, second week Tuesday, is that correct? Um, can we do the first Tuesday? I have a standing meeting the second Tuesday of the month. I'm I'm good with anything, so that works as well for me. Okay. So, so the first Tuesday. First Tuesday of the month. Okay, we can do that. Okay, Melrose, anything else? Any questions, comments? Um, I would just ask if um, any of the people who I don't recognize, if any of them are here from Melrose for public comment or anything else? Oh, we didn't do public comment. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> right. I think they're all here for chickens. And other things. Yeah. Okay, I don't hear anybody saying that they're here from Melrose, but thank you, Frank, for asking that question. Ruth, do we have a time uh, or a date yet for um, phase two, section two, or whatever it's called? 
Unfortunately, no. Okay. They don't tell us in advance. Okay. I wish they did, but they don't. I do too, so I could make appointments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, uh, it's difficult. But, um, okay. So if Melrose wants to adjourn, you can go on with your life. If you want to stay and listen, that's fine. But we can end the minutes for you guys at this point. Does somebody want to make a motion to adjourn? To adjourn. Second that. All in favor to adjourn at uh, 719 for Melrose? Gary Pink, yes. yes. Lissa yes. yes. Okay. Right. Okay. Great. Okay. Thanks, guys. Nice okay. to see you. Good night, all. We'll see yeah. you next month. Have a wonderful summer, Wakefield. Keep in touch. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't right. be strangers. Be don't well, be everyone. Sure. <laughs> we'll miss um, you. So Bye. I just wrote I just wrote in comments for everybody who is participating online. Um, just apologies for the order and that we will be taking public comment with each issue on the agenda. Um, so we'll be going ahead and opening. Um, do we need a, a motion to open the public hearing, Ruth? I believe we do. Yeah. Okay, so Wakefield, can someone give me a motion for uh, to open the public hearing on the variance request for 7 Norway Street? I'll make a motion to open the public hearing for 7 Norway Street variance. Uh, I'll second. Roll call. Okay, oh, roll call. <laughs> I'm writing. Um, uh, Gorville, yes. Yay. Silva, yes. Linehan, yes. Okay. So you want to start us off, Ruth, with an introduction, and then we'll go from there. Sure. Um, so 7 Norway Street, um, the owner, Sarah Colvin, is online. We sent you, we, she's done a couple of iterations about where to have the chicken coop and, um, and run. There is a stream that runs in the back of the property. So I had her go to the Conservation Commission who met last Thursday and approved it. And I believe Cindy this afternoon sent yes, you a copy of that approval. So um, let's see. So if you're looking at the map that we sent, to the right is uh, Jen Demaro, and it is 30 feet from her line. In the rear is Ron and Mary. I don't have their last name written down. Ron and Mary. Um, <laughs> they were very nice. I met Rob them. Robbins. 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 Thank you. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, it is eight feet from the property line, 40 feet from the stream. On the other side is Rosellen Tetch, who it's 90 feet away from her property line. Okay. And then across the street is Constance Tetch. So, um, so the reason she needs a variance is because it is within 50 feet of two of the property lines. Right. And have we heard from those two property owners as to whether they have any issues with it? I spoke with the Robins today. Um, yeah, I, I sent you, I sent you, um, yeah, it should have been in the packet with all this information that, that Cindy sent you from Rosellen Kraus which I guess is the same as Rosellen Tetch. Yeah, we got that one, but we didn't get, but more, more importantly, the people who are short. So um, no. they're under 50 feet, we didn't get any comment from those neighbors. I had phone conversations with the rear neighbor. Mr. and Mrs. Robbins. Robin. Um, I believe it was their son that I talked to technically. Okay. And he was fine with the location and actually the applicant moved the coop from her original spot to where they wanted it. Yep. Even though it's closer to the line than it would have been, it's where they want it. 
Yeah. And I have not talked to personally um, the other abutter. So, so that's what I got. So. Okay. Any comments from the board? Did anyone do a site visit? Yeah, I've seen it. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to take public comment first? Yep. Yeah, okay. can we have that first? I'd like to hear. Absolutely. So um, is there anybody who from the public who would like to speak to this? Um, if you're on your computer, you can actually raise your hand on, yeah. on Zoom um, or you can or, or just unmute yourself and start speaking, but identify yourself. Yeah, there's a second person by telephone. Uh, 781 You don't have a name. I'm going to, I just unmuted that number. Okay, my name is Rosalyn Prouse. Oh, there you go. Not okay. Perfect. Not Rosalyn Petch. Okay, <laughs> sorry. I have, that's okay. And through all time, you got that corrected. Yeah, that should be corrected. My name is Rosalyn Prouse. That's what's on the deed, that's what's on the mortgage, that's what's on the property. Line, whatever. Okay. Um, so, because the person that has not been contacted who has less than the requirement of 50 feet, would this be approved? They have been contacted. Just they were caught, they were all sent, everybody was sent a letter. That's, that's, okay. not, the so that's not the issue. That's not the question. The question is, is that after the end of this meeting, are they approved? Wait, wait a minute. <laughs> the question is, is that the Robinses have been contacted. Mm -hmm. There is no comment from the Demurls, correct? Contacted, contacted us. We did not contact them. They contacted you correct. and approved it, correct? Yes. They approved it. They don't, the neighbors don't approve or disapprove. Okay, well, if she needs a variance, then somebody's got to approve it. The Board of Health. Correct. The Board of Health is the one that makes the if, if, it If it's not within the boundary, okay, because it's supposed to be 50 feet is what I read online mm -hmm. from the property line. It is not 50 feet from the property line. By what you just said, it's 30 feet. And by her drawing, it's 30 feet or eight feet from the Robinses who approved it. Correct? So oh, the public comment period just is for you to make comments. It's not, it's not a um, Somebody has another phone ringing in the background. I do. I do. I just, I just. I, okay. So you should make your comments and so that the board can hear them but a public hearing is not i'm asking questions actually is what i think i'm doing we just want to i'm not sure making that, comments i'm asking questions we want to make sure jen demuro gave 100 percent permission for this to take place within 50 feet of our property line again I mean, isn't that isn't that the boundary again neighbors don't give permission or not permission neighbors are notified of the application and given okay so the i know they've been notified I'm, I'm on board with they've been notified but why do you have a boundary if it doesn't have to be followed that is a rhetorical question so do you have other comments no no i have a question as to the, what it states okay. what it states we're, we're, in your I, boundaries i'm, I'm okay. asking a question about what it states in your boundaries so this is laurel i'm the chair of the board of health this is a public hearing to talk about a variance request. So any applicant who has something different in mind than what is in the regulations comes before the health, Board of Health for a variance. So right now what we're doing is we're in public comment and we're listening to everyone's comments. It is not a question and answer um, opportunity as much as it is just to, for us to listen to the comments we then deliberate later may not we may not deliberate tonight we might um, and of course you're always welcome to stay on the meeting but right now um, we're just taking comments 
from anybody who wants to comment. It, it is not a, it's not a question and answer um, format, though it sounds that that might be frustrating. For okay. You. Well, no, all right. All right. Then I misunderstood the format. I uh, apologize. Our, our question Don't was worry. from the Demurls. If they didn't respond tonight to accept the variance, then you're going to overlook the decision. So I'm you're not going to overlook the, the boundaries. Is, is true, the question true so, or false? So we we True did, I just yeah. I just said this is not a question and answer format. What we are doing is we're continuing to listen to all of the information that is offered to us. And so we won't have an answer until we deliberate, but we do not deliberate during the public participation oh. part of the meeting. That is a guide. Okay. 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 When when do I get to ask questions about what's going to happen here? Because you know what? There's five coyotes that walk down this street every Tuesday morning because it's trash day. And there's five coyotes that walk through my backyard, which abuts her backyard. And I know that you people don't seem to think that coyotes are a problem because they were here before us. I've already heard that once or twice. But I live in my backyard and I have a dog. And I don't think that this is like an appropriate thing here. This is not a thing that should be happening, sure. but whatever. I know this is not a question and answer and I'm trying not to do that, but I'm sorry. Sure. No, but right. actually the way, the way you've just done that is right. fine. So I am writing, right. I'm writing right. Right. comments right. down. My husband's upset and, and, and I am too. And I am too, because, you know, right. I shouldn't have to fear in my own backyard that coyotes are going to be here even more so because I know she's put, been putting chicken manure in her garden, which is, you know, you can go buy it. You can't stop that. But she, but there's a big difference between chicken manure and fresh chickens. Okay. There's, so there's a fox, there's a coyotes, there's, there, there's plenty of animals around here and I should not have to fear to be in my own yard. Okay. So I, so your comments are duly noted. I'm just going to summarize that you're most concerned about wildlife in the neighborhood. And Can I ask you a question? Who comes out and expects that the, the uh, boundary fence is 16 inches underground? So I'm going to review the regs a little bit later. And if you stay on the line, we'll, we'll cover that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Any other comments? That's about it. That, that, that's my concern is that, 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 that we're very, that we're, we're all in very close proximity and, you know, it, 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 the coyotes it, it's already here and there's nothing we can do about it because Maybe. I know the coyotes have been here before me. <laughs> We've taken all their land, so they got nowhere to go, but in everybody else's land. All right. And obviously, we heard it's already in the bag, so we have no consent whatsoever. You already made your decision. Sarah already told us she made your decision. So we have, so we have not deliberated, and thank you very much. It's never mind deliberated. You already made your decision. Stop. So we're, we're going to go on. I'm going to, um, are, are you all set? I, I'm going to mute. I'm going to mute this call and go to the next um, commenter. Okay, thank you. Is that all right? Okay, thank you so much for participating. Is there anybody else who would like to speak on this public hearing for 7 Norway Street? Okay. So there, there are several, there are several butters on the line. Is anyone else want to have anything um, to say? I just want to make sure that we're not getting out teched. Okay. Do you want to hear from the property owner or shall I be quiet? It's totally up to you, Ms. Colvin. 
I'll be quiet. I, nope. I feel comfortable in knowing that what I'm proposing is safe and I am acknowledging the situation of things and they will be addressed. I'm, I'm not going to be placing chickens in the yard for no reason. Okay. All right. So seeing no other public comment, can I have a motion to close the public hearing? I'll make a motion to close the public hearing on 7 Norway Street. Second. I will second the motion to close the public hearing on 7 Norway Street. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Gorbel. Aye. Silva. Linehan, aye. Okay. Um, we can deliberate now or we can de deliberate at the end of the meeting. What was the board wanting to do? Would you so there is only one neighbor, am I not correct, that has spoken tonight against it with her concerns, am I not correct? That seems correct, yes. Okay. So there are other neighbors on the line who are listening. Okay, so no other neighbor, even the other ones that are only uh, much closer, I believe that's the Robins, they're eight feet from the property. They have not expressed any concerns about animals or any other thing, am I correct? Yes, I, I spoke with the Robins today because I was able to, to I was on Essex Street is a better way to look and I okay. um, had a conversation with them and they, they just expressed that they'd like to listen. They did not, um, they did not seem to have any concerns. They actually, um, at, you know, prompted me to get as close to the property and I actually went over that cool little bridge mm -hmm. on the creek. Um, <laughs> and, and saw the saw the site because because the grass had grown a little bit. I know that um, someone had put two by fours to mark where the placement was, um, and we have not heard from the uh, the the neighbor where you know it's a little bit close. So it sounds like it was from what we're hearing from Ruth is that you know it, it's been conjured a little bit um, to actually suit the neighbors, but it still requires a variance because it's not mm -hmm. it's not in the measurements. Mm -hmm. And the Conservation Commission had no concerns or no comments on how close it was to the stream. They felt that it was safe, right? Yeah. According to them. I think on what we sent you today, yeah. I think mm -hmm. the only concern yeah, it looked fine. was that manure has to be composted. Composted, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Any other thoughts from the board? And this is, uh, I'm sorry, I, there's been a lot of paperwork on this. This is for how many chickens, Ruth? Uh, six. Okay, so it's the max. Okay, so is anyone on the board leaning one way or another in regards to making a motion about the variance, whether it should be granted or not? Well, you guys have to make a decision. No. I know. Yeah. Um, so Elaine or, 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 or Candace, do you have any other thoughts? I think at this point I'm leading more towards granting the, the variants. Um, you know, I can understand the concerns about wildlife, but I think that they at this point are theoretical. Um, and it seems like there's, there's wildlife there. Um, I don't know if um, the potential increased risk is a reason not to allow the Colvins to go ahead with the with their proposed plan. And it seems like the people that are closest to them feel comfortable with the plan also. And that in fact is further further away from, from the other neighbor. Um, yeah. I agree with Candace on that. And the one thing I had been was just I think it was Miss Colin who applied for this, you know, went to the Conservation Commission because that was a big thing about being so close to that stream. And she did already move her plans. Mm -hmm. 
you know, wants to, to, to satisfy, you know, everything. And I don't see, and I, I think she clearly understands um, what the Conservation Commission has asked for too. Um, in with the manure that it has to be compost. I mean, that's something that I imagine they talked to her about and she's fully aware of that and wants to go forward. I'm just gonna point out one thing that the placement, um, the pen and the, and the um, it could be moved so that it is pretty much 50 feet away from each of the property right. lines, but it would make it much closer to the Prouses who are the right. people who have the most concerns. So my understanding, and Sarah, you can correct me if I'm wrong, that you try to put it as far away from the neighbors that had concerns as long as the other neighbors didn't have concerns. Correct. And, and, and I'll just, you know, for, just for thoroughness, the way the regs are written and how deep the regulations are that you have to like really dig down um, for the run so that these chickens are protected um, is in fact the, the reg's answer to, to wildlife. Um, interestingly enough, we have an awful lot of coops in, in town and we have, we have not gotten any complaints about wildlife when people have been really careful. Um, I believe that to be true, Ruth. I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't recall anybody um, letting us know that that they've had any um, issues with their coops. You look frozen, Ruth. I don't know where you went. I I uh, I muted because my husband came back into the house and I. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, hi, mom. Okay. So 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 I too am inclined. Um, to, to, you know, I, I'm in favor of, of this uh, variance as well, because in fact, um, it, it, as Ruth so well pointed out, it could be smack in the middle and, and meet the requirement for 50-50, but this is more of a um, negotiation with neighbors. But otherwise, um, this better be a beautifully built and secure coop so that um, things, things remain safe. Um, so we'll need to um, take a call and uh, put a, I need, I need a, um, a motion uh, as to what to do about the variance. Is either one of you prepared to make the motion? Uh, I'd make a motion to go ahead and grant the variance. Okay. As requested. I second the motion to grant the variance. Okay. All in favor? Gorville, aye. Silver, aye. Linehan, aye. Okay, so we now have a public hearing for the variants requested for 8 Webster Street. Um, I believe they want to increase the number. I don't know if anyone's done a site visit there, but um, first of all, we need to open the public meeting. Do you want to close the one for seven? Oh, I thought no, we I did. I didn't. We just said mm -hmm. I and I didn't close the meeting. Yes, can I? <laughs> it's okay. I'll make a motion to close Come the meeting. Me. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to second that motion to close okay. the meeting. All right. Gorville. Don't confusing. <laughs> Gorville uh, votes I to close the public hearing for the variance request for 7 Norway Street. Silva, I. With a hand, I. All right. I need some water. Okay. So thank you, Lauren. You're welcome. Best of luck. And, and more importantly, sincerely, thank you for everything you've done with the COVID. I know you guys have been working crazy, and, and I feel very comfortable living in the town of Wakefield because of you. Thank you very much. Yes, you guys all do a great job. And much, much appreciated. Okay. Best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So now I need a motion to open the public hearing variance request for eight Webster. I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion. Oh. Go, ahead. Go ahead, Candace. <laughs> I'll make a motion to open that meeting uh, for the variance request on eight Webster Street. I'll second that motion. All in favor, Gorville, aye. 
Silver Eye. Lenahan, aye. Uh, um, Ruth, do you want to present or would you like public response first? Um, we sent you the letter. Yep. Uh, and actually, that I do not think. I don't think they need a variance. Yeah, I was thinking the uh, same thing. I, oh. I brought it to you just because chickens can be controversial and, um, you know, the way our current regulations are, you're allowed 24. As we've talked in the past, those are really old regulations that we were in the middle of updating when COVID hit. Um, and I'm hoping to be able to get back to updating those regulations really soon. Um, so I kind of more brought it up because current practice is usually to limit chickens to six, but the way our regulations are written right now, you know, she can clearly have more than six. So, um, and I don't know if anybody was able to go over there. The property is, there's a person who lives in back of the property um, on the side of the property, on one side of the property is a street, and on the other side of the property is woods. And then, of course, um, and then... Uh, it, but it butts right into the town woods. Right. I was there today. And then if there's a person across the street, which technically is part of our definition of an abutter. Yep. So, so that's why I brought it up, but technically um, they're allowed with the regulation yeah. to have that. So a little, a little background for Candace, because um, just before Candace, you came on the board, we spent a long time hashing out and we actually do have a draft that needs a final look. And just as Ruth says, somehow we got uh, sidetracked with all things COVID. So in fact, um, what is on the town, what is on the, the town permitting um, reflects the newer regulation that we have not yet uh, passed. So, so in fact, the older regulation um, doesn't limit the chickens at eight, but looking at the, at the property, it is a little bit tight in there. So I would recommend that it go no higher than eight. Cindy, can we put the current regulations on the website? The current regulations are on the website. They're the old ones. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were saying the draft new ones were on the website. No, 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 no. Oh, okay, never mind. No. Sorry, the old ones are on the website. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Okay. No, because I actually thought that was mistaken. I'm like, this isn't right. I know we've talked about this, but I had neglected to remember that we didn't finish um, yeah. that bit of work. So, in fact, uh, shall we? So there's really nothing. There's no variance. <laughs> there's no variance. I was bringing it up, and I shouldn't have put it on as a public hearing and a variance request. I also had it in my head that yeah. there was a limit of six. Yep, which is what's on our permitting. Right. So that so we will work hard on on making all of that. Yep. Line up. Um, the list. So okay. each new variant. Sorry, this is Jessica Darling. I'm the direct abutter. Um, okay. the, the property line. Um, I understand that maybe another variance isn't required, but I'm concerned with um, that she's not following the existing variance. Uh, okay. And I have issues around that. And I would like to see the existing variance followed before the addition of more chickens. Um, for example, I looked up the meeting minutes from last year, uh, the meeting of Wednesday, June 26th. Um, and it said that she would install additional heavy duty black fencing. At this point, there is no fencing around the coop whatsoever. Um, and actually, this is the first time tonight I'm hearing about the 16 inches dug under, and I doubt very much that that coop is following those guidelines. Okay. Uh, when I was there last, which was not recently, I understand, I thought there was or maybe, oh, you know what? She was in the middle of making the new, 
moving the pen from next to the abutters property to next to the woods. So she was. In it is next to the woods, but it's at the edge of their driveway. Right. Essentially at the end of the dead end. Right. No, no, I'm looking at pictures. It, there was, there was fencing around the run of it. Did the fencing come down? Uh, no, there was no, I didn't have fence. It did not? No. I actually just had a fence person here last week to give me a quote for fencing. Uh, I have, I do have wire fencing. It's not a heavy duty fencing. Who, who's talking, Linda? That's yep. Linda, yep. Mm -hmm. So the, the run uh, supposed to be covered and surrounded. No, Linda's going to show us. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> well, that's cool. <laughs> Only not, one right? advantage to a Zoom meeting. <laughs> yeah. Oh, All right. Yeah. There is fencing. It's not permanent. It's not what? Linda, keep talking because that's the only way the screen will go to you. Oh, it's not a permanent fence yet. We're getting, we're looking to add a small pool in our backyard for our daughter over the summer. So we're getting the fencing quoted to us and, um, the darlings have a little boy, don't want him in our yard, and um, we're when trying he to make yard, sure that he's safe. <laughs> okay. We're well, trying to make sure that he's safe from the pool. So, is it an above ground or an in ground pool? Yeah, it's just going to be. Yeah, I know. I read the regulations 24 inches. It's just a little rubber pool. Oh. But at the same time, we don't want him you know, wandering off and we don't want to find him in our pool. And there's like, a couple of other little boys down the street that- um, so, Pitt, so, Lynn, so wait, you, you, you walked back away from the coop, but it was showing you and not the coop the whole time. Oh. So you either Hold need on. to flip the iPad. Yeah, um, that's what I was doing. I thought it worked. Yeah, no, so-, so Someone saw it. <laughs> I want you to sit still and there we go. Okay, so. So if, can you, if you can just pan all the way to the hen house and then the run, I think that would be helpful. This is the run that you're looking at. I know. So start at the hen house and then come back to the run. And the owls are there to scare things. Okay, <laughs> yeah. okay. Linda, make it go the other way. What do you mean? To the run. To the run. Oh. And keep talking. Okay, talking, talking. Mm -hmm. The chickens are talking. That doesn't help. <laughs> there we go. She's not talking. I know Linda. Talk some more. Count. Do anything. Okay. Okay. They, uh, there well, are the chickens. They're talking. The picture is there, whether you talk or not. Okay. Well, it is. It just doesn't. It just doesn't. Um, is there? Page. Linda, what is that cinder blocks at the bottom of their pen or is that behind their pen? It's all around it. Okay, so the fence is in the ground, the temporary fence, and then you have that around it? I don't have it dug down into the ground. I have the bat, it's barricaded with all those cinder blocks all around so that animals can't dig underneath it. Okay, thank you. What is your timeline on doing this? The fence? Yeah. Oh, as soon as we get a quote and someone can get out here. We've just, we've talked to two people so far. Neither has gotten back to us. And uh, I'm calling uh, another company who was recommended to me and said that they do um, really quick work, so. So my recommendation is- I, I'd like to get it done within the next few weeks myself, but. My recommendation yeah. is you, you do not increase the number of chickens until you have a permanent uh, rodent proof and animal proof enclosure. Yeah. 
because you should have that already. I'm not, I didn't, that, I didn't understand that from our last meeting last year. So, and you had come out and made several visits. You saw what was there. Right, um, but it has to be permanent and it has to be so that animals can't get into it. Oh, nothing's going anywhere. <laughs> it's solid, I can't move it. Mm. So why are you saying it's temporary? No, I, it's not the fencing. I'm getting fencing for it. We're going to put fencing around it. But okay. what is there right now is permanent. It's not going anywhere. Linda, we only care about the run and that the run is enclosed on all sides. It is. And is rodent proof, which means it has to be dug down so that rodents can't dig underneath the fence. That has to be done now. Okay. Yeah. I can, I can do that as soon as I get a minute. Well, um, that's what needs to happen before okay. you add any. So this is Jessica Darling again. Um, so what Linda didn't show you on the video was the second chicken coop behind the first chicken coop, which is where the new chickens currently are. Which um, we're getting rid of. <laughs> we're getting rid of the six existing chickens that you just put out a couple days ago. Or you're getting rid of the second coop. We're getting rid of the coop. What my, my plan is to build a slightly larger coop and put all the chickens in one place. The other coop is just temporary. It's falling apart, and I need to just I need to um, build the new coop. So you're telling me that right now you have six chickens in a falling apart coop. Jessica, they're safe in the coop. I have done my concern. The as coop is not even in your yard, <laughs> visible from your yard. I'm That's not really sure what your problem is of okay. your chickens on my house. We have had a marked increase in mice this past winter. We've lived here we now. We all did. The entire neighborhood did, and okay. it wasn't from the mice. Um, hold, I, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put a hold on this conversation for just a moment. Um, so we have varied off the original <clears throat> topic. Um, what I'm thinking, Ruth, is that we need to do just a, a, a continuation inspection because it just sounds like, yep. it sounds Linda like we just need to clarify what's okay. going on. Okay. Um, and and the variance is 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 moot. We have to make sure that the current the current situation is um, appropriate. Yeah. So, okay. So we'll as I as I said to Ruth in my letter, yeah, we've had no trouble at all over the past year with any animals um their the chickens have been safe i lock them up every single night i let okay, them out all, in the morning we appreciate that we, we all got the letter um what i am going uh what you need to so a couple things one is the the permitting needs to be done um for this year but i think that all of this deserves a revisit from okay. inspectional services. So okay. we're gonna close this conversation now um, and you should be having an inspector pop by um, as soon as we can manage that. But I, I, I can't speak to the department's timeline right now. I don't know Ruth, okay. if you can, okay? Yep. All right. So somebody needs to motion to close the public. Yep. Right. I'll make a motion to close the public meeting for 8 Webster Street. Public hearing. Public hearing. <laughs> I will second the motion to close the public hearing for 8 Webster Street. All in favor for closing the public hearing. Uh, Goreville, yes. Silver, yes. Linehan, yes. Okay. <sighs> Deep breath, this is a meaty meeting. Okay, so I'm guessing everybody else who is on the meeting um, uh, can speak to this. Um, so town meeting is Saturday, finally. Um, Ruth, do you want me to speak about the article or would you like to? No, you can go right ahead. Okay, so 
So, um, you know, health department has been uh, kind of zooming along with, with a lot of different priorities. And one of the very last articles um, for town meeting, um, there are two articles, but all of a sudden one of them got switched, not switched, but within the language of the article, it looks like the health department is responsible in article 27 for enforcing it. And, and in a nutshell, this is a moving away from styrofoam containers um, and moving to a, a greener, more um, earth friendly container. It's a citizen's petition. So we don't generally um, get involved in rewording citizens petitions, but certainly because the health department is um, mentioned and, and part of it that, you know, we, we should have had a little bit more opportunity to review it. I have not had the time to um, speak further with uh, Tom Mullen, town council. I do have, um, I see it, it's Tracy Vincent, but I'm guessing it's Bob that's there or, or both of you are on the line. Um, Bob gave me, um, filled me in on quite a conversation regarding kind of the way the article was written. Being that it's a, a citizen's petition, I, the way I've seen this go before is that it would be, it would be sort of rehashed, but um, process was definitely missed because we weren't um, really brought into the loop when the warrant was um, put out. So um, Bob, I know you have more to say about that. Do you want to comment, Mr. Vincent? Am I there now? Yep. I it's hear right. you. It says Tracy Vincent. I don't have Zoom. My name is Bob Vincent. Um, <laughs> I, I do want to compliment you all for how you've handled um, the COVID-19 as well. I was actually stationed in the Pentagon on 9-11 and had to work on Navy's uh, contingency of operation plans and things like that. So I have an appreciation for what you guys have been going through, although you've had to deal with it many more months than I did. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think conceptually Article 27 is good but I had concerns about it procedurally and substantively. Um, the procedural aspect is the town charter is pretty clear that even if with a citizen's petition, when the town council gets the petition, they are to turn it over to the town administrator and then the town administrator within five days of receipt is supposed to determine who's the appropriate town official or department to look it over, to review it, and then most importantly, make a recommendation at the town meeting. Right. So what, what puzzled me on this one is that the warrants were issued on April 27th, and I noticed that no town, um, I was looking at the agendas, and I didn't see any town department that had it on this agenda. And I thought you would be the most appropriate because um, the way the petition is written or the bylaw is written, you would be have the enforcement authority. Mm -hmm. So I know I'm not supposed to ask questions, so I'm going to assume that this is the first time that you guys are addressing this article and that you never officially got um, anything from the town administrator directing you to look this over and make a recommendation to the town meeting. Correct. Okay. So that's issue number one, that if, honestly, if the petition goes forward at town meeting, that's the first thing I'm going to raise. Now, that's mm -hmm. the procedural aspect of it. Mm -hmm. uh, substantively, I... I I shared this with um, with Laurel, and I have a few changes on it, but I took a look at the article, and I started to do some research. Now, I am not a subject matter expert on this, uh, this area um, uh, concerning the environment at all, but when I did some research, I found that one of the sites in there is to something called ASTM D7081. Um, candidly, it says the American Society for Testing and Materials, ASTM, but they actually officially changed their name in 2001 and they dropped all the words. They're actually just ASTM International. And I do believe that our bylaws should be concise, easily understood and, and accurate. And that's one of the things I would, I would suggest changing. But significantly, D7081 is identified in the, in the um, proposed bylaw as the applicable standard for biodegradable plastics in the marine environment. However, that standard was withdrawn by ASTM in April of 2014, and according to their website, there is no known ISO equivalent to the standard right now, so it seems that site's a standard that's no longer applicable. Now, I do understand that this is almost verbatim from something that Melrose has passed, um, but 
I have also noted that a couple other towns like Concord and Ipswich uh, look this over and do not cite to D7081. And, you know, once again, the way we're set up, we have town meeting, we're all part of the legislative branch, whereas in Melrose, they've got city council. Those folks looked it over and decided that th that was an applicable standard to keep in there, but as part of the legislative body, I don't think that we should have that in Melrose. The other one that was in there, that, a couple of them, um, real quickly, they cite ASTM D6400 as an applicable standard. That actually is, is a standard, um, a specification for plastics and products made from plastics, but the proposed bylaw omits the words products made from plastics. I don't know why that's omitted, but it seems to me the proponent of the bylaw should explain why they only want to use part of the standard and not the entire standard. Another one that caught my attention was the definition of food establishment differs from what's in the Massachusetts Food Code. Now that's relevant because a town is permitted to have a more restrictive definition than the, than the Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. However, I don't know in comparing the two that the proposed bylaw definition of food establishment is more restrictive than the Massachusetts Code. And secondly, assuming that it is, the proponent of the bylaw hasn't explained why that would be necessary in this case. The other one that caught my attention is if you look at Article 26, I, you probably don't have it in front of you, but Article 26 is an amendment of the plastic um, plastic bags and, and to add That's plastic right. straws. Yeah. Yeah. And in that one, if somebody is a habitual offender, which I would define as somebody who commits um, a violation of that bylaw four or more times, the fine is $300. But if you are a habitual offender of Article 27, which the health director would be responsible for enforcing, you can only find $100 for every subsequent offense. So in essence, what the town would be saying is that you can be fined three hundred dollars for being a habitual offender of the plastic law, the plastic bag ban, but you could only be fined one hundred dollars if you are a habitual offender of this um, container regulation. So in essence, what we're saying as a town, it is three times worse <laughs> to violate the plastic bag ban than the than to violate this one. Right. I'm not saying that's right. I'm not saying that's wrong. What I am saying is that we collectively, as the town, should look at that and see whether we think that's appropriate or not. And since you, since the public health department would be um, enforcing this, I thought these were relevant things that you all should take into consideration. I don't know whether you intend to make a recommendation at the, at the meeting on, at the town meeting on Monday or whether this thing will be postponed. What I'm hoping is that it'll be postponed because the effective date in it is January, 2021. And we have another town meeting um, in the fall, where maybe some of my concerns that I've addressed, and, and frankly, I started this by sending it to, to Steve Mayo mm -hmm. and Ann Santos and Julie Smith Galvin, because they're the chair and vice chair of the town council. They referred me to Tom Mullen. I had a conversation with Tom Mullen the other day. I served on the bylaws review committee for Wakefield. That's kind of why I, I pay a lot of attention to bylaws. And I agree with Tom. None of these are showstoppers. It's not legally objectionable. And I don't own a restaurant and I'm not on your public health department. So I won't have, this won't affect my daily lives. But my concern is when restaurants try to figure out what's the applicable definition and whether, whether they have complied with it and they have to come to you, it's a little bit cumbersome for you all to figure out what's applicable when there's standards in there, in my opinion, that no longer exist, or we're only using portions of other standards. So that's why I thought perhaps this thing should be continued into the fall. Okay. Thanks. Well articulated. Thank you, Mr. Vincent. Um, so, you know, in my experience with town meeting, um, this is likely uh, to be continued. We have not been asked to um, make an opinion. I can talk to uh, Administrator Mayo again tomorrow. Um, I would definitely recommend that this be continued for a further review. Um, because it's, it's just, it, it, it just caught, you know, certainly, um, not only that, but I could sort of have a, have a personal bias that would have been putting the, the restaurants through the ringer anyway. So I, I, um, as much as I abhor styrofoam, I, I'm thinking that this isn't a brilliant time to do this. Um, but I wasn't, you know, I wasn't sure what, what the rest of the board was thinking about this. I agree, Laurel. I, I really think it should be postponed mm -hmm. and, and let us really take a little little more look into it to the wording, as he says, and bylaws. And 
it's, I mean, we have been really busy, let's face it, public health has not had a, a day of uh, able to think straight um, with COVID and now with everything coming up in the summer. But I think this is something we really have to look into a little bit more and think of what the, what it's going to do to the restaurants. I mean, and I think that's one big, big thing. We have to think about that. They've struggled and suffered and are just starting to come back. Mm -hmm. And this could be something that could, you know, be the straw that broke the camel's back on them. Just yeah, so you know, Melrose has um, delayed the implementation till um, July of 2021 for everybody except for like the really big places like the supermarkets. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So mm -hmm. because of that, for that reason. So, so, so as Mr. Vincent says, this is, this is just kind of a matter of process mm -hmm. and you know, I'm not sure that we even had time to process this with what has been going on since COVID. So, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to claim harm or foul on here. Um, mm -hmm. I just need, you know, I'll be at town meeting. I'm not sure if I'll be called upon for a recommendation, but I, if, if I am, I want to speak for the board. And so my thought is that the board recommends that this be continued. I do. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't believe this needs to be a formal motion, um, but I will do that if I am asked. And I will, um, I will, because it won't be deliberating. If, if there's any conversation that I have further about this tomorrow, I'll send it to Ruth and she can send it to you as an FYI, as information only, but not deliberation because we can't deliberate. Okay. Okay. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you, everybody. I noticed a few people from mm -hmm. Troop 701. Are you listening for civics or are you listening because of this? We just have to attend the whole meeting. Oh, excellent. So, yeah. We'll just be um, here until you guys finish up. Well, well, I'll come in and uh, I, don't know what <laughs> I hope you get a badge because you know, it's been one fun meeting. Oh, I think it's been fun. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I think oh, gosh. Anything else that's happened to anybody? We have an election next week. I've already voted. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going in person. Are you? All right. Oh, you're so brave. I am. I'm Listen, brave. I have a new. I have a new prototype. Oh, that's a cute. This is soft jersey string. I'm going. Oh. I'm going off the meeting now. Um, okay. Because I am. Okay. Yeah. All right, Thanks, so Ruth. we're going to adjourn. Thanks, Ruth. Bye, Ruth. So Ruth doesn't have to be there to adjourn the meeting, but we do. Okay, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I will second that motion to adjourn all, the meeting. All in favor, Goreville, aye. Silver, aye. And Linehan, aye. And I will also be at the meeting, so I'll see you there on Saturday. <laughs>